Yeah. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, wow, we're up for a treat now. Our next keynote is called Hits Are Made by Fans, Not in Boardrooms. And our guest speaker today is Andrea Gleason. And Andrea will be accompanied by artist Umut Timor and David Nathan. Some of you may know David, he's founder of D&D Endeavors. He's really well known in the entertainment industry, working with loads of A-list artists such as Taylor Swift, Elton John, Prince, and uh, Ariana Grande, to name a few. Um, for Andrea, well, she is well known for being the chief revenue officer with our partner TuneCore. And she's responsible for all of their marketing, their artist support, um, and their artist and partner relations as well. She's also spearheading their international marketing uh, campaign and she's, she's heading up their international expansion. So uh, before TuneCore, Andrea was working in a very successful career at Lord & Taylor. There's so much more. Andrea, we all wanna thank you for all of your support so far and also for the curation of the panel as well. So. There's no more for me to say. Over to you. The stage is yours. Thanks. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. And welcome, everybody. So excited to have you on with us today. Um, as uh, the, uh, the intro kind of shared, today we're covering how hits are made by fans and not decided in boardrooms. And this is like what I like to call a true leveling of the playing field. You know, it used to be that audiences looked to music critics and to DJs to decide what music to listen to, but we don't see that as much anymore. And these days, music discovery is happening through word of mouth with social media being the vehicle. Today, music discovery is taking place through Instagram, Facebook, Instagram Reels, TikTok, Triller, YouTube Shorts, and even Twitter. And, you know, what we're finding is that uh, on these platforms, fans are the ones deciding and they're listening to these songs and they're saying these are the ones that we like and and if the music is good it's naturally bubbling it up to the surface to give you a sense of the scale of how these platforms have just exploded lately tiktok currently has 689 million users internationally with 6 billion lifetime downloads of the tiktok app Users spend an average of 52 minutes per day on the app with 90% of all TikTok users accessing the app on a daily basis. And it's now available in 155 countries in 75 languages. And in less than 18 months, the number of US adult TikTok users has grown 5.5 times. Another platform, Instagram Reels, which is like a TikTok-like experience immersed in the world of Instagram, launched in July 2020 when it was rolled out in India after TikTok was banned in the country. And the following month, uh, Reels officially launched in 50 countries, including the United States, Canada, and the UK. And then YouTube Shorts, which is the newest short form video platform to make its debut, also launched, launched last year with an initial trial in India. And then the trial resulted in over 3.5 million views per day. 
Since then, it's expanded to the US earlier this year and YouTube, the YouTube Shorts player has surpassed 6.5 billion daily views. For me, what makes Shorts um, unique is that it is embedded into the YouTube Music app, creating an immersive experience for music discovery and fans can very organically uh, connect with fans whose music they like without leaving the platform, thus allowing music to be discovered organically. So through platforms like these, fans are able to unearth music that they would, wouldn't have discovered otherwise. So when we say that music discovery is happening on social media, what does that mean exactly? It all started several years ago with the introduction of the music library. Um, and this was introduced in social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. Creators are using the music library to add a mood to their posts and to their videos by including a song. So for example, when content creators are posting videos or photos of a sunset, um, they then look up a song. Okay, what should I use for this sunset? One of the top songs that is pulled up and used is Sunset Lover by Petite Beats Squeak, thus uh, creating a natural way for fans to discover music and then to have it go viral. The music platforms are working with distributors like TuneCore to get the music into the libraries and pay artists when the songs are used or consumed in videos or on photo posts that they do. Then for me, something happened um, uh, that, that was really noteworthy, which is that you know fans are seeing these songs, they're like, what is that? And then they go immediately to the streaming platforms and to, uh, to like Apple and to Spotify, and they're looking up these artists and looking up the songs. And it was very, very notable to me when the DSP partners started to ask us at TuneCore for a list of songs and artists that are popular on these creator platforms. That's when I knew something was really shifting. And the incredible thing is that you can see a song bubbling first in the creator platforms, really almost essentially coming out of nowhere in some instances. And then suddenly that artist is really starting to get traction both on the particular song as well as the rest of their catalog. And they start to see their fan base building. And um, that's happening on social media as well as on the music listening platforms. So to expand on this, and you've heard enough from me talking, I really want to show how this translates to the industry and to the artist's perspective. Um, which brings me to our incredible TuneCore artist, Umut Timur. Uh, Umut is an independent artist who has been making music since he was a teenager. And he released his first album, Istanbul, in 2016, of which two of the songs from that album did really well and got the attention of influencers and other artists on Instagram and YouTube, where he started to really build a network. And then in March 2018, that's when he dropped uh, Vermidden. And three months later, the song went viral after two Instagram influencers made videos using the song in the background of their videos. And today, Umit has 700,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, 500,000 followers on YouTube, 235,000 uh, followers on Instagram. Two of his YouTube videos have over 10 million views and his single that I just mentioned has over 170 million views, which is incredible. Welcome, Umit. I'm so Hi. happy to have you on today. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm really glad. I appreciate this. So let's talk about your incredible career and how these platforms like YouTube and Instagram have really played an important part in building your fan base and a network. But before we get into what happened with, with the song that went viral, I'd love to get a little sense of what your career was like before that. Do you, can you give us a little bit of, um, of an overview on your career leading up to, to the song going viral? Yeah, um, yeah. Basically, I started like in two thousand eight when I was eighteen. You know, I really loved music, like making music, listening to music. And over the years, I um, really understood that music was my passion, and I didn't want to do anything else than music. I also actually quit my university at my last year. Because that was a big decision for me, but. You know, um, I felt I felt like this is the only thing I want to do. So I quit with my university and I dedicated myself to music. I was just only making music. Like I I I, I bought some uh, uh, studio uh, equipments and I was just in my room making music. And 
yeah, in 2016, I, I made an album and I uh, released the album independently. Uh, and the, the two songs from that album actually did pretty good. You know, I had like one million YouTube views on both videos. And at, at that particular time, that was like amazing, you know, without any kind of label support. And and then after that, I really saw um, that this is the only thing I want to do. Now, it, for me, it was really clear that I would give like 100%. And then I was again in the studio trying to make uh, uh, music. And I always kept in mind that um, I should not follow any rules or what other people are doing. I was just focused on myself and what I really liked. And yeah, two years later in 2018, I dropped Vermidin and that was like, poof, like it went viral. And before that song, I was really depressive. You know, I had some uh, uh, um, like problems in my life because, you know, of course, if you are at the age of 25, you also need uh, money, like financial income to live, you know, and to, 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 uh, um, pay your rent or or uh, whatever the case may be so it was really um a hard a tough couple of years for me uh, but i think my passion and my dedication um made me go through all the clouds you know and in 2018 i dropped vermidin and yeah that was was a was a really crazy moment for me like i saw how that song went viral um yeah, it was yeah, really. Let's, let's get into that. Like, um, yeah. what exactly happened? I mean, uh, it's it's really incredible how things really started to take off. Yeah, so I I was really also um, checking out big names such as David today. You know, I was I was checking big names in the industry, what they were doing productionally or with the videos. You know, I I, I really um, checked those guys what they were doing, and. Um, I created my own style, you know, I was also uh, checking out what should I do with the videos, you know, how can I make sure that my video, my song is an eye catcher. So after that, I dropped my song in 2018, March 21, exactly. And two months later, like the song was doing like 50,000 uh, YouTube um, uh, views a day, which was quite good for an independent artist. Yeah. And Two months later, I saw on Instagram that people were using my song under their video. For example, there was this boy and a girl. They were like, you know, hugging each other. You know, it was a it was a nice video. And they put my song under the video. And I checked on my Instagram and I had like 500 followers. Uh, I gained like 500 followers in 10 minutes. At that particular time, it was really crazy for me. And, and, and 30 minutes later, again, you some, someone else... Uh, uh, put a video online with my music under the video and after that I saw like almost 1 million views on YouTube on a day like for wow. two months and the song had already like 50 million views in like three months and yeah so I think um, one of the main reasons that my song as an independent artist went viral is that I didn't uh, um, follow any rules. I uh, did it with um, the way I wanted to do, the way I felt that it was the best way. Like, And then, yeah, all of a sudden, it was a big hit. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think, like, what's great is, you know, obviously you can't always, like, make that stuff happen, right? It's, it's, it's no. like, hey, the influencers, like, liked it, and so they used it. But then there's yeah. things you can do to help um, help get the most benefit of what that's happen when that's happening. So exactly. like you, one thing I I'm really blown away by you is just how how uh, much of a network you, you are, and yes. uh, and how much you are right in there making connections and doing it yes. so organically. T talk to everybody about that because I think that really kind of essentially put gas on the fire that was already sparking. <laughs> so. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, basically, I saw like really famous people like football players, like actors or influencers. They were actually um, posting my song on Instagram without even tagging me. But I was just DMing those guys like, hey, thanks for the love. I appreciate that you are, uh, uh, um, 
uh, liking my song, promoting my song. And, you know, for me, it was really important that um, in that period of time, when I was coming up and my song was going viral, I had to make sure that I was moving uh, uh, not fast, but correctly. So I made sure that I was networking the whole time. You know, I met some new guys and we were following each other. I was DMing them. I asked some people, could you please um, put my song on your Instagram stories or whatever the case may be. So networking is really one of the most important thing. And if I look, uh, you know, at, at the present now it's much easier when i put a song out that all those uh, uh people uh, that i have contact with through over the years like really famous guys it's really easy to to um to have them you know um share your song or uh, promoting you or even uh, uh for example when you're going somewhere and they're like oh my friend umu timur is also here you guys can maybe connect like i met a lot of artists through football players to influencers to famous people because they know me they know the other guys so uh, they made sure that we also linked up so one thing i can really say is that as an independent artist if that moment comes that your song goes viral and you get a lot of attention from people use that time really good like make sure that you network like crazy like every day i was every day on my phone trying to get to know new people and and yeah that's one of the uh keys also i guess that's awesome yeah and um you know it really did uh there's a long game right like i think uh one thing i really appreciate is, is you, you you really are a great example of how do you how do you are present and networking, but not pushy, because I think there's an art to that a little bit, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, you. It's 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 really important that um, in this business you don't have to force anything. If you get to know someone, just leave it as it is. It will eventually one time you guys will meet again. You know, sometimes we meet someone and we uh, are a big fan of those people and then you know we're going to write to them every day or we're going to say let's work or let's make an album but maybe that person at that particular time you know if it's going to happen it's going to happen happen you you cannot force it you cannot be too much present you know i i think that uh, 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 most of the people that are successful don't like that you know it's it's for me the same if i met someone that's like a beginner I just want to hear like, hey, I love what you do and that's it. Because I know that one time we will meet again and then something will happen. So you have to be patient with the context. Like if you see a big artist and you met those person, then just leave it as it is. You know, time will, uh, um, the, 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 the right timing will come. You know, don't force, don't, don't be too aggressive or don't want too much. Just leave it as it is. It's going to come. Yeah, and I think you're you're such a great example of being patient. Uh, uh, one thing uh, that really strikes me is then how how you really use that patience to think about the long term and and how you manage touring. Can you give everybody a little little insight on that of how you want yeah. to make sure you kind of like showed everyone this wasn't <laughs> a fluke with the one hit, right? Exactly. So, so when Remedy came out, I had to be really smart. You know, as an independent artist you have to be really smart because when you have a song that goes viral, they're all waiting for you what you're gonna do next. So when my song Remedy came out, I made sure that I was just promoting this song. And I also had a lot of uh, uh, um, options to do concerts like in Europe, and but the amount was really less. So for me, it was important that I should wait, you know, just wait, just uh, have people get more interest from people. And then when in September, I brought my second single out and that was also, I choose my track Oina because I dropped my album in April, like one month after my big hit. So I was checking out which songs had more streamings, which songs that people loved more. And I saw that that was Oina. That's one thing I can also say for the independent artists. Don't leave your songs on your computer, just put them out. Because now 
uh, people are like, yeah, this is the one. And then they uh, 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 um, promote that song or they financially do so much for that song, but maybe the people don't like it, you know? So I think it's better like, you know, put the songs out and let the people decide which song is, uh, uh, is a big song and then after that you can do a video or you can uh, uh, contact with some uh, with some TikTok guys and make sure that they make videos so for me it was important that when I dropped my album after my hit song I was like checking out which song had more streams and whatever and that was Oina when I brought Oina out in September then I had the game in my hand as a Turkish artist in Turkey and in Europe because uh, after that moment, the offers I was getting from my concerts were like five times more than I could get when I was rushing. Like if I would rush, like, oh yes, now I can do concerts. Then I would like go to the all big cities. I would have thousand or 2000 people in front of me, but the amount of money I would get would be really, really less. Mm -hmm. So people have to be patient. Like, we all want that moment that we are going to go viral and now it's our time. But in that period, you have to move really uh, correctly. And that was one thing I really did. I was patient and just waiting to, to, for the right moment, for the right decisions. Definitely. And, and that has really fast forward to a few years later. Uh, look, at, look at now. Um, I would love to talk a little bit about your the recent release that you, you have out now that is being used by the Turkey soccer team for the European yeah. Cup. I mean, talk about like really exploding in popularity. Nothing gets more representing of Turkey wow. than my being the song uh, for, the, for the European Cup. Tell me about how that happened. Yeah, so actually how that happened is that um, the, that was thanks to my networking in the last two years because I met, I met a lot of football players. You know, I, I am also now actually on vacation with like three superstar football players for, from the Turkish national team. And those, those people I, I was networking, like those people were actually sharing my songs over the years. And I didn't ask to make a song for the Turkish national team, they asked me to do a song for the Tur for the na Turkish national team, and that's crazy for me. And that's why the reason why that is happening because I was patient. I met those guys, and they are asking me, and they are helping me, and they are bringing my song to the national team and saying like, "This is the song that we want for the Turkish national team," and. As an independent artist, when that happens, it's so crazy. But not just as an independent artist, also being patient, you know, because two years ago, there was also a national, uh, uh, we were also in the European Cup, but I didn't have those connections very really well, you know, so I was like, I'm not going to force it, you know, I will just work, work, work on, on, on the songs and see which song would be the best and they asked me to do it. So that's even more crazy to me. Like, um, I know from myself, I would love to do it. You know, I would, even if they don't, they will not ask me, it's for me, it's still a pleasure to do it. It's an honor. But when they asking me to do that, that's, that's a whole nother story. That's like, it's, it's amazing feeling. So incredible. Uh, just really shows the power of building those relationships early. Exactly. Um, so final thoughts. I know that you're building your audience on TikTok now. Um, yes. You know, how are you using TikTok? What final advice do you have for artists in, in just, you know, navigating this world of music discovery? Yeah, because it's changing so fast. When I came out, it was really Instagram. Like, but now it's really TikTok. Like TikTok is the most important thing now for for this music industry because people are making uh, a video you know like for 15 seconds and then it goes viral and then people like the song they go on spotify so with my team we all also discussed and had a lot of meetings and we just checked what we could do because for me it's really important for all artists it's important to grow on tiktok so i have now two guys from istanbul that are really famous tiktokers and I'm going to work with them and their team to build up 
my uh, a TikTok account. And that's also from networking because those people I know from the last two years. So right. it was for me really easy just to ask them and they they were like more than happy to help me. And of course, like uh, financially, I will pay them, but it's, believe me, like 10% of what they normally ask. And that's networking. Like that's the most important thing, I guess, for an independent artist. Yeah, what I'm hearing from you is like the reoccurring themes is patience and networking. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Ume. I uh, really appreciate it. I want to shift gears now to the industry perspective. And Nathan's been waiting so patiently. Um, <laughs> Nathan almost doesn't even need an introduction. Really big music industry veteran has has worked at, at uh, Columbia and Republic Records. Uh, oh. Nathan, um, would love to get your perspective on on you know how the industry used to be with making hits and how has it changed now thanks everybody well first first and foremost i just i'm so inspired by umit now and what he's done and it just it just goes to show you that you know if you have drive if you have patience if you have ability to you know to to create and you're forward thinking you know it's not a guarantee that you're going to win but your your you know your percentages are higher and and he's just a the, the best example of it that he just you know he just grinded he put his head down he just focused on what he needed to do he didn't care about what the critics said about his music or or what anybody said it was all about the fans and and that's what this is all about because you know ultimately if you make music that the fans like they'll find it and 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 you know the percentages are higher when when they like records than when they don't you know, and, and the success level. So for me, it's just, you know, it, it's just finding the right, you know, I manage, I do a lot of different things now once I left the record companies and, and, and I, you know, one of them is I, I you know, had the opportunity to go and manage big acts, um, go into their teams and, and do that. And I, I just, I had this conversation yesterday with somebody because I really, I just, I wanted to work with independent, smaller artists and give them the opportunity to break and develop and create their startup. And um, so, you know, it's interesting just in terms of how the, the industry, even just since I've been in it, has transitioned into, you know, from it went from records to tapes to CDs to, you know, to, to streaming and, and things that there's not even a physical component to it. Right. Um, and, and that's what's changed our entire world in terms of what we listen to, how we listen to it, what we see, uh, what affects us, what's pop culture. Um, and, and it's just, it, it's, you know, to me, again, it's, it's like hearing someone like Umet talk is, is fantastic. And as somebody who works on the independent side and also works with the major labels and does other stuff as well, it's very, very inspiring. So, yeah, Thank I guess you. 100%, uh, yeah. such a great example, uh, which is why he's on here today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> want to make him our poster child. Um, so tell me a little bit, like, you know, obviously radio used to be a big player in making hits. Are you still seeing that? How is radio used? Uh, and then how has that transition been happening for the major record labels in using platforms like Reels and TikTok? Well, uh, again, and I, 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 um, I'm okay with going back to Ume because he talked first and he hit everything. But you know, when you talk to a major record label today, the first thing out of their mind when you talk to an A&R person is, what are your social media numbers? It, right? It, it's almost sometimes before the music, like which is crazy to me. But you know, when you, when you look back at when I was coming up in the industry, your know, radio was the key component, right? It was radio drove everything. Radio drove pop culture, radio drove hits, radio drove sales, radio drove tours, radio drove everything. And, and today, you know, it's still a very important driver um, in the success line of a career of an artist. But I think much more importantly now um, is your social component, is your social media. You know, what are you doing on 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 Instagram, what are you doing on TikTok? What you know? Uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday from YouTube, and and I said, you know, did you get the what I sent you? And he says, he says, yeah, it's great. You sent me what I, you know, you sent me the radio song. I don't want the radio song. I want what's on YouTube and and what's you know what they're doing on TikTok. I was like, oh man. So, um, but it, it's it's still here's what I'll tell you. You know, radio, Instagram, TikTok, you know, Reels, all these companies, all these platforms. They can break an artist 
they can create pop culture, radio will continue to break, you know, to, to create careers, right? Um, a lot of times you'll see artists that have one hit and you'll go and you'll, you know, you'll search them on TikTok and you'll look or you'll look at Spotify and you'll look and they'll have 200 million streams on one song and then everything else underneath it is, you know, is like 10 million, 3 million, 1 million. And you're like, okay, so that was the hit. That was the song that worked. You know, and, and, and what radio does is create the ability to have a career, right? Yeah. Long lasting songs that will stay in rotation and continue to expose you as the artist. But again, I truly believe that the future and what we're doing now is, is you know, is on these type of platforms. Yeah, 100%. Any final advice you'd like to give to DIY artists that might be watching this? Yeah, um, you know, it, again, it's continue to make content. You know, content is king. And, and the more content you put out, I literally have conversations with my artists every single day that I manage but you have to put something out. I don't care what it is. Like, you know, if it's some type of little TikTok thing or it's an Instagram reel or it's just a post, you have to continue because the fans like to embrace who they like and they want to know more. They want to hear Umit put new music out. Whether he's going to release that song or not, they want to hear a single, you know, like, hey, look what I'm working on. You know, check this out. It's cool. Let me know what you think, right? Because the fan interaction is so important because they can help you determine whether or not something is worthy of putting it out or not. So just networking is 100%, um, you know, patience is, is extremely important. Um, but also don't get discouraged. You know, know that just because you're putting out a record, it's not gonna get five, 10, 15 million streams. You know, there's an algorithm attached which nobody understands and you have to try and, you know, you have to try and, and attack it. Um, but again, it just goes to just keep doing it, keep focused, put your head down and just do what you do best. And uh, hopefully you'll win. Yeah, it's it's such a contrast. It used to be that, you know, the five people would sit around the boardroom and they'd listen to five songs and they'd say that one. But now, Those you know, days are over. Zoom it outline, <laughs> he's like, I'm putting it out and then I'm just letting, seeing which one is taking traction. And that's the one I'm going to do the video for. And you're letting the fans decide, you know? And, and and you know what's interesting is, is exactly that is is I've heard I've seen so many times where an artist puts a song out and they get so discouraged because three four five weeks nothing's happened they move quickly to another song and then that song may blow up or the next song may blow up and then people to your point Andrea go right back to the first single because they want to see more they want to hear more they want to they want to dive into the artist's career and what they have yeah so one hundred percent yeah. I don't know if I can say something about that, if that's possible. Yes. Before my song, song Remedy came out, I had like like three, four videos that had like one million views. After Remedy blew up, all those songs did over 10 million. Wow. Because they were out. Right. Yeah. Right. Because they're like, what else does, does he have? Want, I want more. So 100%. So. These people yeah. all want discovery. They want to find it on their own. They don't want to be told by a record company yeah. or a radio station or anybody what to go do. They want to be able to discover it in their mind, discover it on their own. And yeah. I, I, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. It's kind of cool when you really yeah. break it down. It's cool. It really is. Well, I think we've hit time. So I want to thank <laughs> and David for sharing your experiences with us uh, today. And for those that have tuned in, uh, we really hope that you've gotten a bit more insight into how short form videos and social media are leveling the playing field um, and uh, how today everyday fans have really become the new tastemaker with the power to make songs into hits. So thank you so much for joining. Have, uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Andrea, for being the perfect panelist and God. I feel so supercharged after uh, watching that and hearing you all with all of your positivity. Um, Umut from, you know, the power of networking as an artist myself, I'm going to take that on board. Patience and David, of course, content, as you say, is absolutely king. Do what you do best. Such great messages. We have a question in the chat and it's for Umut. And uh, the question is from Simon Mark. And he asks, how much of a factor do you think that the Turkish language lyrics and musical influences 
were in the viral success of the song such as Yine Gel, if I pronounce that correctly. So over to you. I'm born in Holland, I'm raised in Holland and all of the Turkish people in Europe, they were making like so, like German songs. If they came from Germany, they make German songs. From Holland, they were doing Dutch. But I was really into Turkish music because, you know, with writing, I, I, for me, it, it, it's easy to write in Turkish, you know, because that's really where my heart belongs to. And that was a big thing because now Turkish music is going like worldwide, like the Turkish uh, language is, is going worldwide. And I was one of the first after me, every, everybody from Europe, the Turkish uh, people were doing Turkish music. I think that was really one of the things because I was working uh, uh, with a Dutch producer. I'm still working with him like for over 15 years. And we made sure that the, the, the sound of the songs was really, um, was really uh, on a high level, you know? And with the Turkish language, it felt like it's, it's from now. People, even people that didn't understand my song felt good with it because, you know, it's, it's, it's really new. And that was a really a big uh, uh, thing for me, you know, that also helped me to uh, become bigger, even in Turkey, because th those people in Turkey, when they were listening to my song, because pop, pop music was a little bit dying in Turkey, but then I came with this fresh new pop sound, which uh, 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 created a new era. So I'm actually like um, uh, the starter of this new era, which is like the Turkish music mixed with the West sound. Great stuff. The start of a new era. We love that. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for answering that question. Thank you, panelists. Thanks. It's been an absolute pleasure and we hope to see you again very soon. Okay, so next up is at 3 p.m. CEST. We have another panel. This time it's on gaming, a new playground for music. The panelists include In the Fall, Arabian Prince, Sebastian Borget, John De Vecca, and Matthew Gorich. We'll see you at 3 p.m. CEST. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.